everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsRevelease.com. CardsRevelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of your Choker Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week, we're going to be going over your guys' experience in Kansas this past weekend. Uh, we know that's one of Sam's favorite places in the world <laughs> now, and uh, Cody, it's not too far from your home, so it must have been pretty oh, yeah. sweet. Then we'll also talk about the uh, Crystal Cup uh, Ice Cup from Europe, and then we will go into a little bit of the decks, a little more hardcore. Oh, what's up, Piplo? <laughs> and then uh, also... Uh, Briefly go over uh, kind of something to look forward to happening in Tampa in a little bit, which you guys might have heard about. So, Petit Cup. How was it, guys? Uh, Sam? Uh, the Petit Cup was um, fun. I played Moogles. I think I even named my deck. Like, I'm already qualified, so I'm memeing. Um, <laughs> I fully intended to, like, zero X. And instead, I actually, if I won my last round, I would have made the top cut, which is really interesting because I lost very early on. Um, Mm -hmm. but somehow my tiebreaker seemed very insane at the end. Um, but I played a Moogle Sarah deck. It was good. Had I, had I not played against like seven or eight emperors. So yeah, (laughs) it was good. Shut down the fun train. So, uh, Cody, what'd you do for the, uh, day one petite cup? Uh, I played tempo ice as expected. Um, (laughs) yeah. I finally caved and put Sephiroth in my deck, and he was probably like the MVP of the whole day. Except I missed having Vayne. I think Vayne would have very easily gotten. Yeah, I was to the very top surprised eight. that you weren't playing Vayne actually. And your list was the same one as uh, was it Stephen Riley or what was this? S- Stephen. Yeah, Stephen Riley. So that was the same list you played then. You say he's a teammate or something? Uh yeah, he plays at like our locals here, um, gotcha, gotcha. and we we made it basically in my hotel room. Right before we left, <laughs> of course. And we we cut Vane. You you pulled a Sam. Yeah, we cut like ten cards and switched them around. And then I but asked, "Oh, go ahead." He, he shouldn't have cut Vane though. Well, that was not yeah, playing no, Sam. It's... Sam doesn't cut the Vane. Yeah, Sam In fact, we know. we talked about it. Like I swear, we talked about it like ten minutes before the event, and you talked about being uncomfortable cutting Vane. I'm surprised you didn't just like backtrack. I think. Well, I wanted to put Sephiroth in, and it was cutting Vane and <laughs> the second sets are for it. So fair enough. I was going to say, yeah, one Setzer, one Renault. There's some interesting one-ofs in there. Uh, two Sid Reigns. That's pretty oh, yeah. a- ambitious. What, what, uh, do you just attack with Celeste a lot and hit them in the face? Or like, how does how do you get the value out of Sid Reigns? Either that, or you can combo it with Laswell. Um, Lazio, too, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah Lazio, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Um, I guess yeah. also if you have the one of Renault. Yeah, yeah guess, one, 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 one of Setzer's fine. Uh, I've played one of a lot. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, so day two for the top, uh, Cody, you missed top, you said, right? Because of the, because yeah. of, yeah. Because of a yeah. double loss, but, uh, <laughs> loss. Yep, that's what but it was. No, uh, fortunately the guys, at, that's actually uh, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, the guys at collector's cash and RB and like CJ invited me to do the commentary. So that was pretty cool to be able to do that. Sweet, sweet. And then uh, how were the finals, Sam? So I know there were only six people, which also kind of was double bad for you. Cause I heard you made a bet. <laughs> I made a bet that there would be seven people, and I lost, and so I had to buy Cody this ridiculously overpriced plushie. Um, <laughs> oh, is that what that? Okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's really cute though. So <laughs> it is adorable. I'm, I'm not. I'm not mad about it. I just. It's, it's just funny that like we should have had. We should have had exactly seven, but one person uh, had family emergencies, so I lost the bet. And they were in town to... too to play, and they yes. Wow. Yes. Um. Yeah. So, but we it was fine. We had six rounds. Um, winning round one meant that you were locked for uh, basically that you were locked, um, which is really interesting. So I won round one against Windwater. Um, played against Jack, who played pretty well, but made some misplays into my my Minwoo, um, mm, okay. as as people tend to do. Those things happen. Um, and I played uh, Earth Water like Noctis deck. Uh, basically, I called it the DJ, uh, the DJ special, um, basically because I, I borrowed the deck um, and I named it after the people I borrowed it from. I did make some changes, of course. Um, I talked to Toby um, and he was pretty high on Zodiac. And I decided that even though I wasn't trying the, in the same type of list he was, that this 
deck could get get away with playing Zodiac and probably could even do it better than his deck in some ways. Worse in other ways, but but better in some ways for sure. Um, so yeah, I, I played this deck. I, I beat Wood Water. It was a tough game. Um, at one point, I Zodiac a single Yuri by discarding three cards from my hand. <laughs> um, but my my thought process behind that is that you know Jack played three Yuri. If I killed the three Yuri, I wasn't worried about any other cards in the deck. Um, and that's what I did. I killed the three Yuri's, and then I knew that I was going to win the game. So then I played against. Um, let's see, round two, I played against Kyle's deck on stream, um, and I played against is a really really rough analysis of what we'd call that game. <laughs> I I think that I I drew Ash Razzler in my opening hand, which is like two of the best cards against him. Um, and neither of them are easily discardable, so I did just that. I didn't discard them at first and just never drew another blue card, eventually having to like play one of them, and it just it was all downhill from there. It's, but that thing happened, so it wasn't much of a game at all. So Kyle won, and then game three, I played against Amethyst from, um, I think she's from North Carolina, um, or at least she played in other RVA thing, but I also think that she was from there. Um and she drove over to the event. I think it was like oh, a 14 wow. hour drive or something. Her um, and her boyfriend or her husband drove all the way over there to play. Um, and she was on the EX burst deck still. Um, this, this round actually was kind of important because a ruling came up that I heavily disagreed with, but it, it kind of, it actually had some significance in the later rounds. And here's why there was a point where, um, I had already cast two Titans, so she's very aware that there's Titan in my deck. Sure. And she had asked me if there were, if it was okay, if there was a step that basically could she attack with her Vincent and then death penalty if it had Brave. And I said, of course. Well, she just said, can I do something after I attack it before you block? I said, yes, you could give Vincent Brave and death penalty if that's what you're asking. And she said, okay, yeah, that's what I want to do. So she attacked, and she said, before blocks death penalty and kill this one she goes this one and this one pointed right i said okay i picked them up and as i'm picking them up she said well no, hold on i want to kill this one instead and i said well you know now that you've seen that i'm gonna let them resolve it's kind of relevant because maybe if i had tightened i might have tightened there in response um depending on which one you picked and so me saying okay is kind of like a, a lot of game inf- game knowledge that i've just given you information that i'm gonna let these two die because i had like four cards in my hand right and um and so I was like, let me just call a judge and kind of see what they're going to do. Craig was sitting right next door and Craig's like, well, let me just, let me just confirm with RB. RB said, I think that, you know, she pointed quickly enough, even though you'd already said, okay, and had the cards that like, we're going to go ahead and let her switch the targets. And I said, yeah, your, your face says it all. Yeah. I said, I absolutely disagree with that ruling. That would never be okay with that ruling, except and I just said this out loud, I said, but that's the way the judges ruled it, and I'm just going to accept it, right? We're going to play on. And so the reason it was so relevant is because she switched to my 5K, and I had a carbuncle in hand, so I was going to be able to carbuncle it with the Graviton trigger and pump it above the Vincent to block and be able to kill the Vincent. And instead, I had to just take the damage and then like wait for another turn to be able to do it. Um, and so it was really, really relevant. But it was also the fact that it was, I while I disagree with that rule, it happened in any sort of crystal cup. It didn't it happen in a petite cup, which is really like a, uh, you know, even though we, we take it very competitively, it's a much more for the casual crowd. So I was just like, right. okay, that's the way the judge ruled it. I'm going to be fine with it, right? So later on against Kyle, it's, it, it was really relevant because I discard a card. I went to, car, I went to um, Hecaton, this guy, I think. Um, no, it was Carbuncle. I went to Carbuncle, my guy. Okay, right? And it, before I even said anything, I just like pointed and I just like, I didn't even say anything. And I just like, okay, never mind, right? Without saying anything. It wasn't even like she, where she had like made her targets known and like, and I just never mind. And, and so Kyle was like, well, Judge, does he get to take that back? And I was like, absolutely I do, given the fact that I just had someone fully resolve an effect against me and then get to take it back. And I said, there's no way that I would not appeal if this was not allowed. And they're just like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> it's just, you know, but the whole chat exploded over it, of course, oh. um, which was ridiculous. But like, even in a competitive scene. I mean, did you show the card or did you just like kind of like sort oh, of? Oh, I showed the Kyle definitely saw the card. But either way, I still have to announce the target 
like whether I flash him a card or not, is irrelevant. Like I still have to announce the target and everything. Yeah. I definitely, even in a competitive scene, did not finish resolving that carbuncle. Did not cast that carbuncle. But I wouldn't be mad at for Kyle for trying to see if how the judge was going to rule. And I wasn't upset with Kyle. It was just insane how erupt the chat apparently went because that's just how people are. Like people who are really jealous of other people's success. And I say that, and I say that without a doubt. And and, and that's that's no offense, but that, that's just what it boils down to. And it, and I'm actually just over it. And uh, like everyone else I talk to is also over it. And like over people acting so childish that it's just like that is so ridiculous that at a petite cup they got that upset when like literally game changing ruling just prior to that was basically like hey uh, it's a petite cup sorry let him take it back and I just had you know the fortitude to be like okay that's the judge's ruling and we're gonna go with it and she was like I'm sorry and I was like you shouldn't be sorry I, I literally was like you shouldn't be sorry you have nothing to be sorry about. Like that is what the judge ruled, and, and that's not your fault. Like let's let's play from here, and you know it was game changing. But the fact is, is that like people are just so out for blood. Um, <laughs> I it's think just it's just ridiculous. after the recent, you know, after the wrong thing. Yeah. But it's, but it's not even that. I mean, like again, not justifying it, just saying that's no, 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 probably no, no. But, but those like... exact things happened, right? Where we, we've had we've seen Jamie Falker do it on stream. We've seen Alex Hancock do the same thing on stream, right? Um, I think. Alex's deck was with Science, right? Uh, Jamie's was with Earth Wind. Uh, those things yeah. happen either way. I'm sure multiple times they happened in my match against Steven, uh, where Steven played with the wall, but nobody said anything. So people are just out for blood. It, you know, it, it is what it is. It doesn't upset me. I was just like, it was just super relevant. And that's why the conversation was so quick, where I was just like, no, yeah, I'm taking it back. And they can they can eat it like <laughs> because I you know like there's no way that they're gonna change this, but the community is has just so far reversed over from where they used to talk about how how good the community is right and how how strong it is and how we have the best community and I think that if you're still saying that you're absolutely lying or in denial. But we knew that this was going to happen. I think we even covered it in this podcast, perhaps, where we talked about, well, as the community grows and we accept more of the Magic players, and, and that's no slight against Magic players because I was a Magic player. If we accept more of the Yu-Gi-Oh players and the Pokemon players, like they're going to bring a lot of those bad traits with them. Um, and, some of, and some of those traits are surfacing. And now you get to pick individually, everyone listening, what type of person, what type of player, what type of part of this community you choose to be. That, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. You get to choose. I know we just ranted about that, but that's how that round went. <laughs> I think we'll be Kyle, Kyle, <laughs> round, Kyle <laughs> we did not have a good round game one. Okay, Game two, I just drew absolutely everything I needed. I perfectly was a master of tightening everything I possibly could. I think Kyle could have played a little more conservatively, but uh, Kyle was ready to win and was – pushing as hard as he could and i think he knew that he had to push hard in order to win that game and it just backfired and then in game three we had a really good game um and kyle had some really good tech like the golbez um that was really good against me i hit some excellent ex burst that gave me a chance at winning the game or not ex burst but i hit some excellent cards to his damage zone that gave me a chance at winning the game um but he just played very perfectly um and certainly you know uh deserving of the win so I was happy when Kyle won for sure. As weird as that sounds, I never told you guys, I was actually really relieved when Kyle beat me. And then I was excited to see Kyle win the whole thing because, dude, that guy has been on a tear, um, even in Magic. Um, so to see him do so well. And uh, yeah, and, you know, and they just called me and they've already they booked their um, their ticket. Kyle and Chris Lopez booked their ticket for Tampa. Mm -hmm. So they're going to they're gonna probably crash over here. Um, so I'm super excited to, to have them here to be able to test and see if we can put up some results similar in the Crystal Cup. But for sure. <laughs> Cody, any comments on all of that or you... well, I think it's good that Sam explained the whole carbuncle thing because I was actually the commentator like I had to come out and find out what happened. And like what I was told by the judges was very like like it sounded really loose like basically like that Sam just like took it back. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, so I, like, I'm glad that we at least have that explained, which I think if I could have explained it more to the chat, they would have been more understanding. 
Right. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, and I sort of did. I mean, I was going to cast the Carbuncle, but certainly I did not fully resolve that Carbuncle. I did not say I'm Carbuncling who did I have Noctis out at the time. Um, I hadn't resolved it. Nothing had happened. Um, nothing had changed. Kyle had made no motion to say, okay, had made no sign, had revealed nothing, hadn't even winked, blinked, made a face movement. It was nothing like, oh, I, so any type of information gain. I certainly should have thought about the play a little bit longer. Um, perhaps, but the games uh, were going long, and I was worried about time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that I get a chance to explain it to you. All right. And then, uh, any any uh, comment on festivities afterwards, or kind of what anything with the actual like social aspect there? Because I know you're staying with Jake, right? Yeah, I mean, staying with Jake is always the right play. There's <laughs> there's actually just <clears throat> the, everything else is a strict misplay. It is not even close. Um, staying with Jake is absolutely the best thing that could happen to you if you are ever in Kansas City. <laughs> um, being, that being said, like I, I want to say, you know, the after part was also good. I was lucky enough that um, RV had one last uh, um, copy of the judge uh, test to take, so I was able to test and get certified as a level one judge. So now I'm a level one judge. Um, the questions were really hard. Um, they were kind of tricky and I, and I did really well. So I'm really happy about that, but it was just, a, it was a fun thing to take. And then we ended up, you know, just staying and talking till like three in the morning and just, you know, hang out with the community. Anytime you're in the same room with like, you put like Jake in the same room as Alex and you're just going to have a good time. <laughs> like, it, yeah, we had, we had a really good time. So can't believe I had to buy Cody that stupid plushie. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> side by side with your event uh, was the Crystal Cup that weekend. Uh, yeah. Did you guys catch any of that coverage at all, or were you pretty focused uh, on your days? We caught a little bit of it um, while Sam was getting ready for. I think he was filling out his list for the finals, and I was jamming <clears> some <throat> games with CJ. We watched um, Robert Phillips, and I think he went against Toby. And then we mm-hmm. also watched a little bit of JFB's match. Okay, that was, was against the, the uh, Viet Phong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was the mirror match. Gotcha, gotcha. So, what do you guys think of those decks? So they're a little interesting. The uh, the Sephiroth Ice Earth ones kind of close to what we were talking about for Fanfare, uh, Sam. They they have a little yeah, less Earth yeah, than yeah. we did, and a lot more Cecil. <laughs> so, what are your yeah, thoughts yeah, on that? Their list is better than ours, but their list has a lot of room to improve. Um, like they didn't have some of our tech, but um, their list is definitely better than ours. Uh, if you combine the two lists, they're just like wow. Like they're just, I was just thinking like Ice Earth could be really good. And I and when I saw that list, I almost audibled. Um, and then I talked to Toby, um, and I really like Toby's list. He hadn't won yet, uh, but I was fairly certain that it was it was going very well for him <laughs> when I saw his list. Yeah, and I thought about it. I I pulled up the cards, um, and then I really was just like, you know what, like. No matter how tomorrow goes, I want to play like a prime deck and a deck that just represents like, the kind of style that I play and people know that I like I- Earth Water, uh, despite my dislike for Earth. Um, <laughs> I like the color combinations together. I think they suit each other quite well. Um, having big guys that can't take damage is a winning combination against a lot of decks. Um, These days, for sure. Right. So, I w- you know, when I saw Toby's list, I was like, wow, that, that deck is really cool. Um, and he's probably got the coolest, most innovative list to come out of that top uh, cut for sure, in my opinion. Probably over even the weekend. It's interesting that uh, it's a Chocobo deck without Izana or Fat Chocobo. Yeah, and who knows? Like, if I were to build a deck, I would build it with those cards, probably certainly. Even after seeing his list. Um, but that, but that being said, like. I did play his list in the Octagon Open, and I played it. I was X and one, and I played against Robert Meadows, who is by far one of my favorite people to, to play. Um, don't always love to play against them because they they beat me quite often, very, <laughs> very quickly. Um, and yeah, it. I played. Uh, let's see. I want to see what the list that they posted was. I played this exact fifty because this is the list that he sent me couple of nights ago yeah i played this exact 50 and just crushed um robert meadows 
on Earth on Earth Wind. Shout out like, to Robert Meadows. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it, there was nothing that he could do, and you would think it went well. Like his his play was like play uh, like a turn three. He like played in Philly to get back two cactars. Turn four, he was like cactar cactar dadaluma, right? And he's Seems playing against good. this list, and I just was like, okay, you, this guy's dead. <laughs> and I just <laughs> killed him like four turns later. Uh, and took no damage other than the two damage I took from my own Zodiac. Yeah, Cody. Uh, oh wait, sorry. This is this list. This list is probably the future of the next six days or five days or four days. This list is the future Opus Seven that we deserve. <laughs> Always at the end, right? So, uh, Cody, you play a lot of Wind Water. I know you've gone standard unit route before. How do you feel about this list compared to ones you've played in the past? Have you played anything similar or? Uh, yeah, I've definitely played like Wind Water chocobos for a very long time uh but i think it's interesting that he played three galbez obviously like the things you said like the no izana and no fat chocobo uh but i think three galbez is pretty crazy as well uh, and that and the starter garnet it's probably for the zodiac right oh yeah yeah obviously but three just seems kind of high but <laughs> i mean obviously he's going to world so i i can't really talk too much it's interesting, too, because uh, uh, I was just going to say one thing real quick before I forget about it. No, you're, uh, you're is good. The fact that, like, Galdas, in this deck, there's no monsters to get back. You're not really capitalizing off them not having cards other than them, you know, just playing less things against you. Uh, so the minus five is probably the mode that comes up most, or do you, is it mostly discarding, you think? Because there's not a whole lot of follow-up to that minus five, uh, unless you're, like, attacking with Cloud of Darkness. But, like, on defense, it doesn't seem like there is. Well, you have Diabolus, which is which can be pretty relevant, but I think even more realistically, like some a lot of these guys getting in um, at minus five is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but the discard can be really relevant because it actually forces your opponent to play a little differently. Like, like let's say you're playing in a deck that's aggressive like this, um, and by aggressive I mean like this is nowhere near as aggressive as a normal Chocobo's deck or a um, like a mono fire deck. This is much more aggressive, like the kind of deck that like. If you're playing against, if you're playing water, you're playing Earth Wind. This deck would be considered very aggressive, right? right? Like, they, you are the aggressor in those matchups. Whereas in against the fire deck, like maybe this deck would be the defensive deck, right? So against those decks, like Galdes presents a problem where it's like, well, we have to Shantoto early or now because at any point this deck could drop into Shola and stop that from happening, or just killing the Galdes could rip the Shantoto from our hand, and if that happens, the game is actually over, right? Um, and that's, I think that's a really dangerous uh, thing. And yeah, of course, three Galdas certainly interacts very well with the Zodiac, um, particularly because like if you get to the late game and you you're not sure how to get over them, um, you can just set up some blocks with things like the Viking. You can block with your Zidane. You're not afraid to lose these guys, um, and then you can Ico back the the Zodiac, kill all their guys, and then attack them out of nowhere and win. Right. Anyway, sorry, Cody. <laughs> so the uh, you were talking about the Garnet and the. Uh, no, I just thought the, I just thought the Garnet was also pretty interesting with like the poo poo and uh, one drop Leviathan, but yeah, I've I do never, like that Leviathan. To be fair, I've never actually played Starter Garnet. Oh, so. it's good. Oh, you it's have so never good. lived. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a super. Wait, <laughs> Zach oh, no, and I have played that, that here for yeah. sure, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, yes, you did with us, and I was like, wait, that's Angel <laughs> when yeah. we played the uh, Pal and Porum uh, list back in the day. Right. right. Yeah. yeah I that. Um. Another thing that I think is unfortunate for the guys running the Ice Earth deck is they weren't playing Zolera. Right. Zolera hits every single one of these forwards. That's true, actually. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of threes. Yeah, I didn't even and think like, about that. That's like how I crush Windwater. Like, that was like, that's the reason I quit playing Windwater Chocobos is because I got Zolera a few times, and it was like, if you don't have the Ishtola, like, you just lose the game. Yeah. Yeah, you could kind of make up for that, too, though, right? Like, there are ways to play this. Like, this deck has three Diabolus. Um, which, you know, you could, you could counteract it. Well, they also have, uh, Ru runic, right. Or they, they have, um, right. yeah, Edward, they, they have Edward, the, Edward right. So they, they have ways to like counter those things too, but like Diabolus just spits in the face of Zalera, if a good time <laughs> Diabolus, particularly because you're going to also take out their Sephiroth on the way. Um, or you're going to untap and make a tempo play. Uh, you have Zidane's. I mean, I'm not saying Zolera is not good. Zolera is probably the absolute best card against this deck, uh, save for maybe a Stola, right? Mm -hmm. Or not sure Stola, but Shantoto. Um, but it does have ways to come to combat it, right? And like this deck only has the Stolas to combat Shantoto, 
whereas at least the Diabolosis are actually pretty nutty uh, against the Zelera. It has team. the Dane, too, for the Shantoto. Like, you just, if they're holding yeah, yeah. it for too long, just strip it. Yeah, that too, and that can be that can be kind of good. But my, I guess my point with the Diabolosis is that if they spend four for the Diabolus, you're only spending one more CP to negate their four CP card, but then you also get to do other things, like use Chocobo Knight to put a Chocobo into play, or, or something silly like that. Yeah, I was actually just reading that card. That's cool that you can do that on your opponent's turn, not just your turn. Yeah. I just realized a... he's not playing Hasty Chocobo. I just assumed. It's actually the one that grants haste, and then the one that's like a Kefka on a body. Correct. And so there was this great play I was playing where I guess Robert Meadows where I um I played it I played Chocobo Knight, I went and got the haste one, and then I didn't play it. I just kept it in my hand. And then later on I played it, and then when he killed it, I played a cloud of darkness and then I gladiatored it back. And I think he just conceded right before that actually happened. I played the cho- I played the Cloud of Darkness <laughs> and it was gonna gladiator back the haste one and then He's like, yeah, good game. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, Gladiator giving haste. To... Ooh, man. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times, like, I'll be playing against Water late game, and I'll be like, all right, I know that I'm safe from X, Y, Z, because it doesn't have haste. There's no way this Water deck has a way to give haste. But having that Chocobo to just out of nowhere Gladiator back and give, like, Cloud of Darkness, Lena, whatever else, haste, that's pretty sure. insane. A giant knight, like, you're, what, 9K they get up to in this deck? I mean, I mean a baby Viking. Like, just, sure. just being able to have haste out of nowhere is pretty relevant um when you're like damage racing galvas is pretty good yeah yeah for sure i mean obviously cloud darkness is probably the best card to give haste to um but i can see chocobo knight also being ridiculous so you said you think this is kind of like the future or the next you know six days or whatever (laughs) until opus 8 pre-release hits and everybody dumps their opus 7 cards uh what what advantages and disadvantages do you think it has over we'll call them stock lists of wind water, you know, the, the recent mostly wind splash water decks. Well, the Obviously advantage it's more aggressive, is, but well, it's more aggressive than like mono water for sure. Um, it, but the advantage is that it's not all in. It's less, it's actually less aggressive than maybe even some of the mono water decks. Um, the three gladiators and the haste Chocobo actually make it less aggressive um because it allows you to recover and so like let's say let's say you're on like a damage race and they reset the board with like a shantoto well you untap play like a a zidane you know take a card for their hand and then glide you're in the stole the the chocobo the haste guy and hit them and now you're back on the the offensive Mm -hmm. and while that seems like very aggressive it's almost like an all it's you don't have to go all in because of those three gladiators so you can play two forwards, and then when they play their first forward, you can play your third forward. And when then they play their second forward, you can play your fourth forward. So you can just keep it up. Like I, I only like to have two forwards above my opponent at all kind at all times, um, in case of some sort of Cognazzo or Shantoto um, situations. Um, and so you can play that type of game with this, and the gladiators really let you play it. And then you have the f- uh, the four ex burst uh, standard unit searchers, which is pretty relevant. With a card like Zodiac, uh, particularly because those those Zodiacs, when they wipe your opponent's board, if they hit an EX first, also are going to give you a forward to keep pressure um, right. after that. So, I think those are the the advantages. As far it, it will also just not being known, you know, like sure, like people have this one memorized, going, like they have the other one. How many right, like they don't, to play? They're, like yeah. now they're gonna see a Galdas and be like, uh I think he might be having a Zodiac in his deck. Whereas like before, like they're never gonna see a Zodiac coming. Um and so they maybe they don't attack one turn. They're like, Well, I think I need to sit back and def- be defensive here, and then they just have nothing and they die out of nowhere. Um obviously in the future that play is gonna be a little bit differently. The weakness of this deck certainly is that you know, you could take advantage <clears throat> of a lot of um the, the weaknesses to this deck through through like just knowing what's out there. For example, it only has fifteen backups. Um, oh, if actually, I didn't count. Wow. All right. Right, and and it does play the longer game. Um, it's not as as aggressive um, as some of the other decks, so you can exploit that in the the later stages of the game. It is a little bit weaker to the emperor than some other decks, of course. 
you know, uh, in the UK, people don't really play the Emperor right now. Um, and so having, you know, Arc, Gladiators, Green Mages, Moogles, um, and Chocobo Knights isn't necessarily like a a real liability, but that could be, I think, here. Like it like in Kansas, that's would have been a scary <laughs> deck to I feel like Emperor into. I feel like if I tried building this deck, mine would have like eighteen backups and at least like four of them would be two copies of Waka, two copies of Maria, and like I'd be trying to go way too big and this one's just eh, arc. <laughs> yeah, so I so I built I built the deck um afterwards and the difference really is that I am um minus one Galdez, uh up one of the Chocobo uh the Haste Chocobos. Um the one that actually has haste by itself. Oh, okay. So you have just a singleton copy? Yeah, I think that that could be really good. Um, the card's great, yeah. That's I was actually surprised. I saw three Chocobo, three Chocobo. I'm like, oh, it's just the one that gives haste and the one that has haste. <laughs> and I just didn't even look at which ones. But yeah, and, I, and without Fat Chocobo, good, I can see but... why they're maybe not playing that. Yeah, I, the other thing is I'm not playing the three-drop Viking, which could be really relevant in the kind of playing that middle game that this deck's looking to play. Um, and it does search for water CP off of the other things. Um, but I felt like I wanted the third Zidane in the deck. Um, so I'm playing a third Zidane over that card. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Is sweet. Congratulations to Toby for, for being sure. The first, and being the, the first at three first, the fir- Yeah, the first at three P, the first to qualify for Worlds. Um, the first first three-time qualified player <laughs> the first world <laughs> champion to re-qualify for worlds manually <laughs> true yeah yeah <laughs> uh, well Which i guess i guess yeah with our i'm assuming we'll see alex playing in the uh in big you know tournaments even though he doesn't have to i say technically alex also repeated right i don't i don't know i don't know yeah, if the world right. champion has it, it gets an automatic invite this year I we thought, don't know. i thought they did I thought that was... Oh, maybe we'll have to look that up. I don't know that one. I don't know for sure. Anyway, uh, with a lot of changes that have been happening, and st- I, I've stopped assuming things work the way that they used to, <laughs> which I think is an important thing for people to do, because there's no reason to assume that since the game is improving. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see Alex get an automatic invite, but at the same time, like I'm not going to assume that. Like I don't remember if that's a thing or not. Maybe it's been posted. But I'm not going to say it because eventually we'll have someone say, well, I heard that they automatically had this and that's, you know. Right. I don't know. That keeps happening and, like, we got to put it into that. So real quick. Particularly, I'm just bothered about the draft thing. Like, I keep <laughs> hearing people talk about, oh, well, no, they, they canceled draft. And it's like, well, no, that's I just true. saw that on Facebook. Yeah, someone said something about it was or wasn't that just a rumor? It's like, no, that's no. why it was a problem was because it wasn't a rumor and then people freaked out and it just happens to be that the first Crystal Cup is one with a different format. Right, and so people are like, well, now they canceled all of them. Like, well, no, no, that's not true either. <laughs> yeah. That was never announced, and then some, you know, some people thought like, well, they just extend the the things into um, Swiss rounds, and well, no, that was not announced either, and we don't have confirmation of that. So let's just quit the explain the the process of thinking it happened like it did last year, right? Um, because because it shouldn't. Nothing should happen the way it did last year. It'll either be the same because that's the best method. Or it'll improve, but it, it's not happening the way it did last year because that's the way it did last year. You know, like right. let's just keep improving the game. So, yeah, so I, I think one of the ways that they could improve on that is actually put things on the official website. Like put everything on the official website. Stop making yeah. a Facebook post. Stop making a Twitter post. Like put it on. I just dis- I, I I disagree with that. Well, I would say I'd say do both, but like okay, right, both both, both, both for different. sure. Yeah. The the thing is is that we live in in a different type of society in a different world than we did 10 years ago like magic for example has just done things so long that when you looked for the banned and restricted list you looked at midnight on the official page right now you don't have to do that you can just wait and star city or channel fireball will post it immediately don't worry about it you know and so you can just click their link because everything is relayed through social media and so it doesn't bother me, but but there are some people who don't use social media, and there are people that don't use Facebook for privacy reasons. And for that reason, I would agree that, yeah, you're right, Cody. They should post it on those official things. The other thing that that would help reduce is people saying, oh, I heard this and I heard that. Right. Um, 
I kind of just wish we knew all the formats ahead of time, like already, because people already have to start booking flights and stuff and to figure out where you're going and like times and venues and all that. And we don't have that yet. And, um, yeah. yeah, I could see that. Like, I feel like, yeah. like, like, again, like, I, I hate to do the whole to go magic to a comparison, crystal cup with, but yeah, I'm, I'm less likely to go to a crystal cup with draft. So that's fair. Like, I would like to know a little bit sooner than. Or like, what if they surprise us and like one of them's like, "Oh, surprise! We're gonna do a two deck format." Like, we don't know what Gen Con is yet. So like, what oh, if I would a... like so- I would sign up so much faster if they said that. Right. Like, what if it was yeah. a crazy format like that? Like, what if someone really likes draft only and like one of the Gen Con ones is draft again? Like, we don't we don't we don't have that information yet. And like, you have to buy Gen Con tickets to go, or maybe you want to buy Gen Con tickets so you can go at the same time. I don't know if you have to, but like all these things add up to like. Why can't we just know? And like, why is it not? Is if it is planned, why isn't it shared? But I, I know there's that's a whole other <laughs> can well, of worms. Well, but well, we know that we know that RB is the person behind um, these announcements, but mm-hmm. not necessarily these decisions. Right. And that's I where fully people, that. I think, I think that's where people get confused is because RB is head of the NA announcements mm-hmm. um, and really handles all of the the putting together of these events. They still have to get approval through not just SE, but through Hobby Japan. For and sure. so there's this long cycle of things, and things just get announced. And, no, I understand. And, you know, I, I, I'm yeah. still, I can still say I wish it was one way without oh, you know, placing the blame on RP. <laughs> well, we wish that there was a bigger team handling that. Um, of course, everyone wishes that. Uh, you know, let, let's give it RB this, uh, a, a raise to manager and put some, <laughs> some people under them, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, great. speaking of the drafts uh do we know if the crystal like the tampa one will be draft or if it'll have draft no constructed draft. constructed only for this event okay and we know that because the event page says that specifically and for those listening that is how you will know from the announcement of this podcast and before if you want to know what uh the format is for an event you have to look at the event page if the event page is not up yet you do not know the format and that is part of zach's complaint but just i'm just saying that so that you you can stop saying well i heard there were no drafts or i heard that we're doing top cut drafts or i heard that they were doing sealed of focus <laughs> one whatever it round is one that sealed round two draft round three constructed round four title Dude, no. <laughs> round one should be opus one constructed round two should be opus two constructed all right you just get to add cards oh to i get to start deck. off one oh in a tournament oh you get to you get to add cards to your deck over and over and over that and then like sweet. yeah and then round the the finals is just played in like opus 10 draft okay okay no now <laughs> what you do no, no, no. Every round, you have to keep at least 10 cards from your previous deck. Oh, or yeah. Like, or like 20 yeah. or something, so that you cycle through like the opuses as you go up and like transfer. Our, For sure. Yeah, every opus, you no, make it even more. You have to really, every opus, 30. you can change just 10 cards. You can change 10. Oh, boy. Yeah, so that opus 2, you get to add <laughs> 10 opus 2 cards. Opus 3, you could add 10 more opus 2, or you could add 5 plus 5, or, you know. It, that would be just really super interesting. I think we would just play win water at that point. Well, we'll, much, well, you, well unless, like you say, round, uh, unless you want to win round one. I but, would love to say Golbez. Yeah, because that's what Zach's probably thinking. But. Oh, 100%. I'm guaranteeing that round one. <laughs> yeah. Then round two, yeah. we'll, we'll go a little more towards Mono Lightning. Round three, more towards Mono Lightning. Round four, start to mix some ice in. <laughs> but yeah, it, would be like that. it would be that's fun. Cool. Yeah, that would be fun. And speaking of the Crystal Cup fire, there's only 50 tickets left. 50 Something like tickets. that, yeah. We, we presume. Yeah. I know they said that they could expand the venue if needed. Yeah. You know, I and I and I want to say that my, you know, get a get a place at the hotel if that right next door is a lot of people are going to hang out. Uh, Zach's place is uh, has frozen over with some Canadians. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, my place, I already have. Uh, we have some we have some heat and some some coolness coming in from the Kansas air. We got a uh, Chris Lopez and Kyle, and we got uh, a couple of the Miami guys. So my place is full, um, but we still have Chad, uh, Blakemanship, and, and a bunch of other Tampa locals who have agreed that people can stay with them. Just reach out. Uh, we have a Facebook page. It's I think it's Final Fantasy TCG uh, Tampa. Uh, reach out there if you're looking for a place to stay. Um, you can't really afford a hotel, or you just want to just chill with some really cool dudes. Um, but yeah, there's only 50 tickets left. It's gonna sell out. It's gonna be wild. Um, you definitely want to go. So. 
though. Also, uh, so it's uh, Jonathan and Tony are staying with me from Canada. Uh, and I was talking to Jordan, and I, I, you won't be able to see on the camera, but Jordan did send me a message that said, might be one more two dot 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 with two winky faces. So if we want to get some peer pressure going to get Jordan to close that deal and make it down to the Tampa Cup too. For sure. Send him messages, spanners sure, inbox. Be sure to message him immediately after this. Tell him to try to get one time, one time Jordan <laughs> <laughs> this year. For sure. Yeah, I know. I think me and like, a lot of the Californias, like Oki and Rice and Brian, were all staying at the hotel right next door. So, either way, come out. It's gonna it's be a stacked good first Crystal Cup. That is for sure. The weather will be warm, so that, that'll be fun. Yeah, it will be fun. Listeners. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you staying extra days, Cody, or are you just staying kind of as short as you need to for the event? I think I might actually have to change my flight leaving depending on how late the Crystal Cup goes. Okay. So does it start, does day two starts at one as well, or is the day two starts at? Or I'm not sure when start? I'm not sure when day two starts, but I know my flight leaves at like seven ish, which might be cutting it close. Granted, you are very close to the airport. You're you're fifteen minutes, fifteen twenty minutes at the most away from the airport. Um, right. And this assumes you day two. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'll play Vane this time. Don't <laughs> yeah, <worry>. right. Yeah, <laughs> everything will be fine. <laughs> You'll, yeah. you'll have uh, palms in your deck. You'll, you'll be a happy man. The irony of someone saying, of course I will day two. I'll play Vayne. <laughs> yeah. That is the most vain thing you could say. Of course I'll day two. Vayne. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, man. No. No, I'm super hyped for the Crystal Cup. It'll be sweet. Lots of people from out of town. Lots of people from nearby towns. People in town already. It'll be awesome. But yeah, that wraps it up for this week, guys. I'm Cody Snodgrass. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CarsVVLease.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.